Hello, mom. What's up? What's up? Welcome back to another video, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are busy with the car again. Uh, we are installing drop plates today. Uh, as you can see, the rear fitment isn't great. I mean, it's not bad, but compared to the front, it's pretty shocking. Um, so we've got these plates supplied by, I think it's Bag Boys, which uh, they were unfinished, so I just painted them green. Uh, we've got obviously one for each side, and then we've got hardware to match, which also goes in there. So that should be quite easy. Um, it's basically like installing camber plates, so there's not really much more to say other than just showing you guys basically how we do it. So we're going to get cracking with that. I'm probably just going to put the camera on a tripod or something and then just show you guys where we are. Maybe give some info here and there, but it's not really supposed to be a how-to. So everybody's looking for that. There's plenty of videos online, so yeah. <laughs> drum is off. I don't know, what's that centerpiece called? Uh, this, the I guess the hub. axle will be. That one uh, is off. So now we basically have to remove these four bolts over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but behind there... Uh, okay, you can't see it. Our camber plates are currently in there. We're going to take those out. We might try and put the camber plates back in when we're done. Uh, we'll see. I think it will work with the drop plate, but uh, we'll have to figure that out when we get there. But uh, yeah, so this is going to come out of, come apart now. Once the hub comes off, you don't actually have to remove the brake lines, to my knowledge, to do this. Uh, but we might have to unclick them from here because of the height of the hub being lifted. But we'll figure that out when we get there. So we've got the plates in now. Um, you can see them over there. Uh, everything actually fit really well. Uh, we still have to bleed the brakes and so forth. And uh, we did have to bend the brake lines a little bit to make them fit, but uh, everything fit like Um There's no issues. The only thing that we're worried about is the handbrake cable, but we're going to cable tie that in so it shouldn't be a problem. And uh, we did test clearance, everything's okay. The only thing we are dealing with is the bumper up here is flaring a little bit when we air the car out. But I'll show you guys that now and once we tighten everything. We also had to shorten one of the bolts because the plate is hitting the actual, the original, where the original um, hub bolts into, the bolt is hitting that. So we just trimmed off, what, like two or three more? Yeah, got about two threads. Yeah, two threads off the bolt itself to fit. You only had to do the one, thankfully, but um, it wasn't too much of an issue to do that. So yeah, we're gonna tighten everything up, bleed the brakes, make sure everything's good, and then adjust over. And you can see the brake fluids already started eating at my paint job, but uh, I mean, that's not too big of a deal. So we're gonna set that up and get cracking. All right, she's on. Um, probably not the neatest of paint jobs, but I did this a very long time ago. And, um, you can see everything's done, the sensor and uh, brake line are cable tied together as well as the uh, uh, the handbrake cable and then they each individually cable tied to the um, to the axle, I think it's the axle right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but mainly because if one of them snaps then you know all of them aren't going to all go flying on their own like there's a bunch of different points of resistance if I could say that it's going to prevent them from snapping so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, we're going to head over to the other side and try and show you guys a little bit more on the other side and how to do it or how we did it. 
and then yeah, everything's good. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can put the camera on the outside here. So you guys can see. Eh, that's a bit of a difficult angle. Yeah, that is an odd one. But uh, there you go. That's basically it. Welcome back guys, uh, shit, what a focus, welcome back guys, um, we're busy with the car again, uh, this is the next day after installing the drop plates, I did a pretty bad job of filming it, um, but uh, I'll be honest they're not as technical as people might think, like I said the di most difficult part was probably bending the hard lines or the most worrying part, but other than that, that all went really well, so um, we got to finish now, and show you guys basically where it's sitting. So this is basically it. You can see how it's basically centered the wheel in the arch compared to normally the wheel comes a bit more to the right because when the axle tilts forward that basically ruins the front. So it's um, centering kind of like the front. The front still tucks pretty heavy. I, I wish it didn't but um, I'm still figuring that out. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. It actually tucks completely. Well, it will normally tuck just over the rim over here but uh, I prefer the fender to lip. Like yeah, I can't, I can't get anything in there. So it's, you know, and uh, it does the same on the other side, just, I'm not going to walk around the car. Uh, but I know the Potas are notoriously a little bit wider on the um, left side, so uh, it's not too bad. The bumper is flaring a bit as well, but I believe that's because the tire is basically too big for this, uh, or for the set of the rims, basically too wide. It wasn't an issue before because I had the camp plates. Um, but now with this, the spacer that basically the um, that the droplets are causing, it's basically a 10 more spacer at the same time, so it pushes the wheel up. But it definitely aligns the footprint a lot better. So like from this angle, at least I think it fits much better. So yeah, that's basically where we're at. And also the car is actually even now in height. It's not sitting with the back a bit higher. If anything, it's caused I'd say. The front not to sit as low like now I can fit my foot under the front whereas before I wasn't able to as much because of the I'd say the rake look you know the front was a bit lower but yeah um, everything's looking pretty good I need to clean up and uh, I've also got a rattle in my door I don't know if you guys can hear this that 
that uh, I believe my speakers come loose. So uh, I thought I would just uh, adjust that in this video. Show you guys why not, right? So uh, I'm gonna do that, and then uh, yeah, that should be the video. But uh, let me get to that, and then we'll go there. All right, we're done. I uh, fixed the door rattle. Um, one of the screws had come loose. Uh, I couldn't get the um, the panel off, but that's because it was a bit fuss, and I mean I didn't need to, so I just put a small screwdriver there, put the screw in. Shaking sure, it. Can't hear any rattle, so it's good enough. Um, I'm assuming that the self tapper that I used, I, put, I installed those speakers like two years ago, and the self tapper I used uh, just came loose, so fix that. But yeah, I'm really stoked. If you guys are interested in these drop plates, um, Bag Boys on TikTok, um, he also has a WhatsApp number that you guys can contact him on. I'll put that all in the description so you guys can contact them if you're interested in some drop plates. Um, in my opinion, I think they look awesome. The only downside is once you put these in, you can't get nearly as high um, in the back as what one might used to. I'll put a little bit of air in the front and then I'll... So I've lifted the rear there. It probably can do some more. Let's see how much PSI it's sitting at. The rear is sitting at 60. When I was, when I drive it, at the, I mean, since last night, the testing I drove it like 70, and uh, 70 is good enough. The only downside is the wheel obviously pushes a little bit further back for driving, which isn't the end of the world. It's more so to get that fitment when we air out anyway. So that's basically what we're going for. Like I said, it can go more, but. Um, You'll see it's gonna tuck if I do so. See the energy just popped in a little bit. Which I don't mind, but uh, to be honest, I prefer the fender to lip anyway. So for me, that's basically perfect. Maybe I'll do one of those things where I put the money in there and try and pull it out, I can't get it out. All right, so got that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it if you did and you made it all the way to the end. I know a lot of people skip through. I mean, I'm not going to judge. I do the same on YouTube as well, so yeah, nobody's perfect. But if you did, thank you for watching the video, guys. I hope it was somewhat informative. And uh, look, we got more content on the way, some really cool stuff coming. Um, I'm still working on the aero discs, so you guys are going to see that really soon. This will probably come out before then, but I started with the aero discs before that, so if there's any confusion, You'll know why because you might see the fitment being off in the aerodisc video coming after this either way 